Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss section 351. What is the big picture? What's the big idea of section 351? Well, when an individual form a corporation, what they will do, they will invest cash or property. So as shareholders, what you will do is you might have some extra cash, you might have land, building, inventory, whatever asset you have, you will contribute to a corporation to form a corporation and you become a shareholder, basically an owner of the corporation. In return, the company will issue you stocks, stocks of this company that you formed. Simply put, what you did, there's an exchange here. Well, if you exchange cash, it's easy. There are no consequences. So you basically purchase stocks of this company, of company A, with your cash, and you become a shareholder of company A. The question becomes, how about if you contributed property? What's the issue with the property? When you contribute the property, how much are they going to give you in terms of stocks? Well, if you contribute a property, let's think about you have a land, a piece of land. The adjusted basis, you bought this land for 100000 That's your adjusted basis. When you contributed this land, it has a fair market value of 150000 So if you want to sell it today, you can sell it for one fifty. So when you transfer this property, this land, to the corporation, you are transferring $150,000 worth of assets. And they're going to give you back 150000 worth of company stocks. Well, this is an exchange. Well, what do we have to do when we have an exchange? When we have an exchange is if you sold the asset, sold your land for the stocks of the company. And this is what we're going to be discussing here. What happened to that exchange? Is it taxable? Is it not taxable? This is where section 351. I'm going to give you the short uh, version of it. If this transaction qualifies under section 351, this transfer of land, the transaction will not be taxable. Now, we need to know what is section 351, what are the specific rules, but this is what we're trying to introduce. Section 351. Let's go ahead and get started. Now we know what the big picture is to discuss the little details. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So section 351 is involving transferring property to a corporation in return for stocks. Well, that's great. Generally, when you transfer a property to another party and they give you something in return, generally speaking, that's a taxable transaction. How do we compute the taxable amount? We'll take the fair value of the stock received, whatever you received, minus the adjusted basis of the property received. And as a result, you have a realized gain or a realized loss. So for example, if we go back to the example, the fair value of the land is 150 and they would give you fair value of 150. The adjusted basis of the land is 100,000. Simply put, you have $50,000 of realized gain. Well, however, if this transaction is section 351, it's not taxable. Now, before we proceed and explain the details, I want you to think about why the government that does not tax this transaction. What are the reasons for this exception? They're saying, well, if it's section 351, which we did not define yet, but why is this not taxable? Well, well, the first reason is there's wherewithal to pay doctrine. What does that mean? Well, think about it. You exchange land, they gave you stocks. Well, guess what? The IRS is not interested in stocks. The IRS is interested in cash. What we are saying here is you did not receive cash in return. Therefore, the IRS is not requiring you to pay taxes. That's one reason. Also, when you exchange this land, this piece of land that you have, and you got stock in return, stocks in return, basically it's a continuation of the investment doctrine. Well, also known as substance over form. 
what does that mean when you own stocks in the company you are owner of this company you are still the owner of this piece of land all what you did it basically transferred ownership from your personal account to your corporate account so there's a continuation of investment doctrine so you still own this property you did not really sell it and simply put congress congress wants to encourage corporate corporate formation so what congress want they co congress wants to make it easy for us to do what to form corporate corporation and to conduct business on a larger scale it's good for the economy let's take a look at some numbers to see how this whole thing works well let's assume adam incorporate his sole proprietorship or will incorporate his sole proprietorship adam invested twenty thousand dollar in cash well the tax basis for cash is twenty thousand well if you have twenty thousand dollar in cash what's the fair market value of that no one will pay you more than twenty five thousand dollar in the right mind right adam also contributed furniture of twenty five thousand at the tax basis the adjusted basis is twenty five thousand that furniture and fixture if adam sells it today adam would receive sixty five thousand also adam contributed land and building with a basis of 250 and fair market value of 310. all in all adam contributed basis uh, assets with a basis of 295 with a fair market value of 395. well simply put if this was an exchange if adam sold, sells well you cannot sell the cash but if adam sells the furniture and fixture sells the building and the and, and the land well if you think about it adam will have gains of a hundred thousand in total there is a gain of a hundred thousand but and what's going to happen with that gain let's assume adam's in a tax bracket of 25 percent adam will have to pay send the government a check for twenty five thousand in taxes this, this will be the result without section 351 but since adam we're assuming this is a transaction under section 351 simply put adam is incorporating taking his asset giving it to the corporation that he owns and this is a, this is an important concept here then this is section 351 with section 351 adam will not recognize any gain or any loss why because his economic status has not changed he still has the cash but now it's in the corporate account he still owns the furniture and fixture but it's in his corporation therefore there should be no taxes no taxes assuming this is section 351 we haven't even defined what section 351 is we've been just saying except 351 what's the definition well it's the, the transfer of property to a corporation solely in exchange for stock where the transferor or transferors, many of them, are or in control of the corporation immediately after the transfer. What does that mean? It means we have either one individual or group of individual, they transfer property. In return, the company issues stocks to them, and that stocks is form of ownership in that corporation. And after the transfer, this is important, right after the transfer, this group of individual, they own 80% of the company why 80% they are in control of the corporation if that's the case this is section 351 transaction now what is transfer property what's the property well property could include uh, everything basically all property except services so services is not if you contribute services time expertise that's not property and we're going to talk about services in a separate recording property would include cash land building equipment intangible assets secret processes and formulas installment obligations all of these are property once again the code specifically excludes services from the definition of property and we're going to have a separate recording because we need to know when the owners when the new owners contribute services kind of we have to discuss this separately so for section 351 the transferor must receive stock and not any stock stock of the company that you are that you are an owner so not stock of another company the type of stock could be common or could be preferred not a big deal okay anything received other than stock so if the company gave you something other than the company stock itself it's a boot now if boot is involved we're going to have to discuss this in a in a separate recording as well so we're keeping this transaction clean you transfer property it's section 351 after that transfer you have control of the corporation because of that 
this is section 351 because of that you don't have to pay any taxes on the gain of the transfer okay now boot only flow from the corporation to individual so boot when we talk about boot because we don't we cannot confuse this with the boot of property transaction the boot can only flow from the corporation to the owners one way only one way okay because in, a, in an exchange there are two ways but boot for section 351 is, is one way not like kind of transaction where boot can flow in both ways we're not talking about this we have to be careful and remember how do we define control 80 percent or more now bear in mind control when it comes to financial accounting all what you need is 50 percent for tax purposes to have control you need 80 percent now let's walk through a series of illustration that's going to illustrate this concept so we have an individual a and this individual contributed property and stock received in return 7,000 shares he owned 7,000 shares stock individual b did not contribute any property did not contributed any services and ownership b already owned 3,000 shares well let's talk about this so total number of shares for this company is 10,000 how much does a represent after contributing property and receiving the stock well 7,000 out of 10,000 is 70 percent B did not contribute anything but B already owned 30 percent now my question to you is this with this transfer with this transfer for a because a transferred the property would a qualify under section 351 yes or no okay because section 351 applies per transaction so what happened is this a transfer seven some property received seven thousand shares seven out of ten thousand that's seventy percent is this section three five one and the answer is no why because to qualify for under section three five one you have to be eighty percent or more and seventy percent is less than eighty percent so section three five one does not apply what does that mean it means whatever property a contributed they will have to determine their gain now you're saying what if they have a loss don't worry we'll have a separate session if we have what's called built-in loss because we have to worry about built-in gain now so any gain that was that was involved in that property is taxable so a he or she must he or she must recognize any gain or loss on the property well we'll talk about loss later we'll talk about loss later let's look at a different scenario we have individual a that, and we have individual B, two individuals, A contributed property and B contributed property as well. A did not contribute any service, no service involved. We're going to keep the service for the next session. As a result, A received 2,000 shares, B received 2,000 shares. So A owns 2,000, B owns 2,000. That's the total shares. So A owns 50% of the company because we have 4,000 shares in total. B owns another 50 percent which is in total they own 100 percent of the company okay remember section 351 applies per transaction okay now is this section 351 a and b both transfer property and each one received 50 percent and the answer is yes the answer is yes because what we are saying here each one of them got 50 percent but section 351 is you could have a b c d many individuals contributing at the same time it doesn't have to be the same day they just have to be in close proximity where they organize this transfer together here we are assuming that a and b they organize this transfer together and within a time period that's what they contributed two pieces of property each one of them got 2000 shares they control the company why because 100 percent is more than 80 percent therefore section 351 will applies what does that mean it means whatever property they contributed we have no gain and no loss we're more concerned with the gain we'll talk about the loss later no gain no loss let's look at another transaction let's assume one year later this is one year later after a corporation is formed we have individual a and individual b individual a transferred property individual b did not transfer any property no services are provided here individual a received four thousand shares and as a result now individual a they contributed whatever property they contributed they got 4,000 shares now they own 6,000 shares individual b already owned 2,000 so total we have 
8,000 shares overall for this company. Now, what happened is this. So now, right now, what is the ownership of A? Well, 6,000 divided by 8,000. A owns 75% of this company and B owns obviously the, the remaining 25%. Okay, so A transferred another property and received 4,000 shares. So this is the transaction. Okay, now after the transaction, he accumulated 6,000 shares because he already had 2,000 from before. You remember 2,000 plus 2,000 2, from the prior slide where, he had, where they each had 2,000. Okay, now 75%. So after the transfer, what's the ownership now? 75%. Is this transaction subject to section 351 and the answer is no why because after that after the transfer 75 percent of the total stock is owned by a doesn't have control it's less than 80 percent so notice in the prior example a only contributed 2000 and b contributed to get 2000 and it was section 351 this 4000 shares what they received did not did not did not get the section 351 application. What does that mean? It means whatever property they transferred, they must recognize any gain or any loss on that property. Let's look at another illustration. We have individual A and we have individual B. A transferred property, B did not transfer any property, no services involved. We're gonna keep this clean. A received 2,000 shares and now he owned 8,000. So remember we went from in other words, he had six thousand prior to this, to this, then he prior to this contribution six thousand plus two equal to eight thousand. B had two thousand shares. Now we're total ten thousand. Now we have to see if after the transfer, what happened to the shares? After the transfer, A owns eight out of ten thousand. Eight of, out of ten thousand is eighty percent. That's the magic number. B owns twenty percent. Well. That's another year later. Is this section 351? Now we also transfer 2,000 shares. And do we have section 351? And the answer is yes, because the after the transfer, A owns 80%. Section 351 applies, and A don't recognize any gain or any loss on the property transfer. So this is the big idea of section 351. Now we're going to have to look at many different versions of it. First, first, we're going to involve service. So we're going to say, now what happened if the individual contributes service? Then we're going to involve liabilities. What if the person contributed property and within that property, we have a liability attached to it? Then we're going to have to understand what if we contributed to the corporation property and the corporation gave us in return some boot, some boot, something in return other than, other than the company stocks. And this is what we're going to have to deal with. But what should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional MCQs, true false, additional simulations, exercises that's going to help you understand this important concept, which is Section 351, contributing property to a corporation. And after the contribution, the, oh, the new owners control 80% or more. Good luck. Study hard and stay safe.